Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. Welcome to another week's allotment vlog. It's very, very windy today. As a reference, my allotment is based outside Oxford, UK, where we have mild winters and cool summers, and my last frost date is mid-May. So it's a Saturday afternoon, and we're still suffering what I believe is the tail end of the stormy weather that we've had across the UK this week. I haven't had much damage, uh, if any, you can't call it damage, the, the frame of the new greenhouse has moved slightly and um, yeah I guess I'm lucky it didn't take off. I guess it was buffered a little bit by being next to the hedge there. But I've seen some atrocious damage to people's mini greenhouses, my friend's polytunnel is completely totaled and she just got it, she just set it up so it's just really really sad. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy there's nothing worse that's happened here. I guess I'm lucky with the way the wind hit us this time. But yeah. So this, uh, I've already done some work on the plot. I've already uh, finished tidying up the strawberry bed. It's just so windy, I can't really film outside. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm hiding in the greenhouse. Um, and I have... Um, I'd readjusted the greenhouse back to where it's supposed to be, the new one, and uh, I've just tightened some bolts, nuts and bolts that maybe weren't as tight as they should be. And now the sun is out again. It's really, it's like April weather today. It's cold in the wind, uh, but the sun, as soon as the sun comes out, it's really nice in the greenhouse. So I'm toying with the idea of having a go at sorting out the no dig beds in the greenhouse. I mean, I keep talking about it. I keep talking about it. Uh, there's just a few more steps that I need to get done first, but at least now I have all the components for it. So I'm umming and eyeing of whether to start with the glass on the greenhouse and get it wa water tight, uh, weather tight for seedlings to move into because it's getting very tight in the small greenhouse. But then if I put the glass in and then I put the seedlings in it means I'm not gonna get the no dig beds done in there so I'm thinking I should do the beds first and it's probably easier without the glass in there because it's just a uh, less likelihood of damaging it with um, the wheelbarrow so the greenhouse base is sitting if you've missed my previous vlogs the greenhouse is sitting on a slope right so I've dug down quite deep on one end because otherwise the one corner would be floating in midair, right? So then I've dug down, put timber where the frame sits and the no dig beds are going to be sitting inside there on top of the clay soil that I have here. I prefer growing in a greenhouse in the ground and that is because of watering issues and also nutrient issues. So. It, um, it's tidier and maybe easier to keep neat if you have a slab base or a concrete based greenhouse and if you're gonna mainly use it for like potting on and things like that sowing seeds but I'm gonna use it to grow tomatoes and peppers and aubergines and all that so I like growing them in the ground mainly because it means I can water a lot less because they have a chance to spread their roots down deep looking for water and I know there are well there's rumored to be springs underneath these allotments which is why we can still grow quite well even though we don't have access to water I don't know if that's true or not but it still it still helps having your greenhouse plants growing inside in the ground instead and uh, no dig or race beds inside there is by far the easiest so yeah that's what I'm gonna do um, but first before I can start there's always something that's stopping you isn't it so before before I can start building the beds I need to secure the timber so we dug out quite a lot around the timber to make sure it fitted correctly so now I have to put the soil that we dug out from where the beds are going to be around the timber and like firm it down so it stays put. So, um, you know what? I don't need to do that. I mean, I do need to do it, but I can do it after. 
so I can, I'll just start doing the no dig beds. You know what? I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, and it's gonna be so many layers. They're gonna be amazing. It's gonna be so good. I'll probably make a full separate video about the beds I'm doing in there, but um, I'll go through quickly what the layers are. Right, I'm back in the greenhouse, this greenhouse, after spending most of the afternoon in the other one. So I'm absolutely exhausted, pooped, and uh, I did get pretty far. Not as far as maybe I wanted to, but I got a few layers down. So first of all, got the cardboard, double layered, extra thick. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's probably unnecessary because it was bare soil it was going on to. But it just, um, it just makes me feel better. And then it's a little bit tidier. <laughs> I don't know why I think that. But anyway, I decided to put down a uh, wheelbarrow load of manure at the bo as a bottom layer, just to um, get some bulk in there. It's not finished breaking down yet, but a tiny amount like that won't hurt. Um, it won't, it won't be a bad thing. It will br continue breaking down. And then I had this bag of Bokashi Soil Improver, which I bought by mistake, cheaply online, of course, thinking it was Bokashi brand that you use to ferment your food. This is more like already fermented. So it's a little, it's a little bit like what you get out at the other end, a little bit like um, the digestate that I use from uh, Bloomin' Amazing that they sent me as part of a paid promotion earlier. So it's it's very similar to that in in the texture and look, but it smells just like Bokashi. Anyway, so uh, I got that used up by putting that down. And then I had some uh, uh, charcoal or biochar left over from some other gifted item that uh, I put it into the small greenhouse uh, when I mulched this one. And biochar is very interesting. You should read up on it. Uh, it it's uh, it's basically just charcoal. It's sort of a depend different sizes, right? So what it does, it's uh, it has like a micro porous structure, which is perfect for uh, bacteria and other microflora living in the soil. So they absolutely love that as a, like a habitat. Plus, it does not break down, so you only need to mulch with that once. And it should be like, I don't know, like a 10% of your mulch. I mean, I didn't do 10%, it won't be 10%, but anything is better than nothing. And um, it also helps with drainage and also water retention is, yeah, because it's porous, you know? So it actually has like the structure of it, the surface structure of charcoal is immense immense and that's why it's useful to put into your soil it, it adds uh, aeration and structure to it that that your plants will love as well as the microflora in there so anyway i put that in i soak it for at least 24 hours first because otherwise it becomes like a sponge and you can't really water enough so i've soaked it and put some um i got this um uh, wood vinegar uh, fertilizer with it as well so that's that's like rocket fuel that stuff so I've, I've uh, diluted some of that as well and um, just hypercharged it basically so that's as far as I got uh, then I was gonna put on one of my Bokashi soil factories but it just isn't degraded enough and I don't want to risk bringing rats in there so I'm just gonna leave it in place what I'm gonna put is probably some of that blooming amazing digestate stuff uh, use up the last few bags I have and then homemade compost and then I'm gonna put um, that moorland gold really fine compost on top and that's what the plants will be planted into so I'm sorry you do not need to do this right you do not need to do it this way but I have all these little bits and bobs and I need to use them up basically so that's what I've done and it'll create like a nice little layer cake for um yeah the soil life there so hopefully they like it <laughs> but now i am so tired and uh the sort of the wind has finally sort of given up um but it has been with me all day so i'm yeah i'm a little bit feel a little, little bit washed out so i'm gonna go inside have a cup of tea relax a little bit with my kid and then get back out 
to it tomorrow and do the final two layers there. So um, the center part, you can see I've de demar demarked the central aisle with the timber and that I'm going to put down wood chip on the path there. I'm going to maybe put another layer of cardboard first, but then put down wood chip and um, then I'll remove the timber. So there won't be any timber in there for slugs to love, uh, but it's just to hold the, the beds in place until they're sorted, right? And then the wood chip will hold them in place and it'll be fine. Uh, it'll be sort of a, a fluid line between the bed and the path and that's the way I like it. The beds will be slightly domed and raised above the wood chip. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna go inside now and I'll probably see you tomorrow. Hiya. It's uh, Sunday afternoon, I think it's three o'clock, I think I heard the church bell ring and um, it was fairly pleasant but now it's really clouded over again and the wind's picked up so I'm a little bit, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm fuming basically, my, um, one of my plot neighbours uh, decided to start spraying with Roundup and uh, I mean, first of all, it's really pointless to do unless the weeds are in full growth because it needs a large, uh, it, it, <laughs> to work properly, to go down into the roots, it needs a large um, leaf area to, for it to enter the plant. And second of all, I'm pretty sure the instructions say never to spray on a windy day and the wind was blowing straight onto my plot and I mean, yeah, they don't have any living plants and any living vegetable plants on their plot, but I have loads. And <laughs> what was the excuse? Spraying close to the ground? Well, I guess uh, maybe people don't really understand the, the whole thing about aerosols or something. I don't know. A, a tiniest speck of that can kill my plants. Like, And I have purple sprouting broccoli straight up there. So I'm really fucking pissed off. It's powerful crap, like you should really, really read the instructions. First of all, only use it, you know, on a on a day when it's probably not gonna rain. We are forecast rain in just a few hours. <laughs> and, uh, you know, follow the instructions. It's like people using the weed killer that's related to aminopyrrolid, clopyrrolid on their lawns. And then they cut, mow that grass, and then they put that in the green waste recycling. And that's how the bloody poison ends up in our composts. Read the instructions. It all comes with instructions because they are poisons. Like, follow the instructions. It's like if I did stuff in the lab with things that are marked <laughs> not to pour down the sink, and I just go ahead and pour down the sink. Like, it's just not... It's not on, it comes with the responsibility of buying the stuff. But I mean, I know I'm preaching, I know I'm preaching to the uh, the converted already. So I'm sorry about that. I just get really angry. Yes, so, <laughs> so today I've actually already done a few bits and bobs. I, um, I put up some new uh, shelving into the greenhouse. But first of all, I had to go find it. So I use it to hold up mesh during winter because it's like perfect. Uh, it's much more sturdy than um, other things I have. And I don't have enough of those big um, hoops, you know, for brassica cages. So these are obviously lower to the ground, but they work perfect for garlic and broad beans and whatnot. Anyway, I had to scavenge some of them back off the broad beans and put some um, really gorgeous uh, cast iron hoops that were left on the plot when I took it over. So I put some of them in. They're not as good, but they work. And uh, yeah, I've put it, the shelving into the greenhouse now, so it's getting very full. But I had to do it because the peas I sowed, uh, what is it, like on Tuesday, they've already germinated, so I had to get them out of the house. So yeah. Um, Anyway, the uh, the job of the day is to try to finish those the beds in the new greenhouse, and um, yeah, I mean, I I saw a dreadful story of Good Life Garden or Diana on um, on Instagram. She bought a new greenhouse. It looks looked pretty big, 
and it was gorgeous, you know. And then she, they didn't manage to complete it. Like one side of the roof glass wasn't on before the storm hits and it all crashed and bent and all the metal was like ruined. It's awful, absolutely awful. So I'm gonna have to try to get spare parts and whatnot. I mean, it's what you need to remember with these like big things that catches the wind. So that makes me think, like greenhouses, glass houses are pretty good because they're so heavy. As long as there's no weakness and the wind isn't just hit it just so or is super strong, right? Um, and usually it's toughened glass or should be toughened glass in greenhouses. Maybe they're not the old stuff, maybe not. Um, but you need to, it, there can't be any holes because then the wind gets in and gets like a, um, gets a gets a hold, you know, and can really lift it. Uh, yeah, so that makes me a bit worried about swapping some of the glass in my new one for polycarbonate because it's much lighter and a bit worried that the wind can just do what they want with it. So maybe I'll try to source some glass glass instead for the greenhouse. So I'll do that. But um, I actually have a broken pane over there in this one. And I've just like put that together with some pieces of sort of see-through plastic that was lying around the plot. Um, and that's held, but that's obviously a bit protected by the hedge and everything there. So there's rarely wind coming from that side. So maybe that's helped it a bit. But yeah, it's a bit of a worry, isn't it? And yeah, I mean, I was talking about that yesterday, wasn't I? It's a atro atrocious damage you can see on people's Instagram or YouTubes. The wind, man. Wind is bad. <laughs> but yeah, so the plan was to uh, complete those beds before I can put the glass in, hopefully when the weather's calmed down a bit. And I know I said yesterday that I wasn't going to put in Bokashi, but I think I will. I think I will. So I'll put it in as the next layer. It's not fully decomposed, but it's not like manure that's still sort of burning. Uh, seeing as it's fermented, it's a different process, so it shouldn't hurt the roots and anyway mixing it with new organic matter like I'm gonna put homemade compost and this Bloomin' Mesa stuff on top it's not uh, it's gonna help it break down faster and uh, with the manure in there as well I don't think it, it should matter so I'm gonna try to do that layer and then probably Bloomin' Mesa and then probably homemade compost and then probably the moorland gold <laughs> just a t just a thin layer on top and uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. So I had a thought earlier, it's a lot of thinking today, but I had a thought earlier that the several bags of hamster, is it hamster or guinea pig? I think it's guinea pig uh, droppings and clearings from a cage of my neighbors. She's been given to me and I, well, I basically took it because the bin men wouldn't take it. <laughs> so I think they thought it was green waste. Uh, which I guess it is, but we have to pay for green waste collection and I obviously we don't have one because I use the compost um, Or garden waste, sorry, garden waste collection You have to pay extra for that, so most people don't have it unless they have a big garden Anyway, so I've been taking that several bags, I don't know, six, seven bags since autumn She's given them away now or sold them or something, so there's no more coming, but I actually had a dreadful thought that the straw in there could actually be hay and if it's hay and if it's bought in a pet shop I mean it could potentially have amino pyrrolid in it and I've already put that into my compost I think only one compost so far I have three on the ground or two that are finished and one that's still filling so I think I only put it in the newest one yeah, I think I did that. So, I will have to remember to test that one before I use it. Must remember that. Oh, it's so scary, like... I, th I think my, um... I think the one I'm uh, putting inside the new greenhouse is the one I've used inside this greenhouse and it's all grown really well in here. Um, <laughs> that's really stupid, I'll just 
show you. I'll just insert it instead and turn you around. But it's really lush in here, so there's no problem with this one anyway. So that's good. Anyway, less talking and uh, let's get back into it. But yeah, so it's growing remarkably well in here. So I need to pick those flowering shoot their soils in. And uh, the mustards are flowering too. But I mean, really, what's the difference between a flowering mustard and a flowering broccoli rob? I mean, they look slightly different, but I'm sure they taste the same. Like, <laughs> so you c you could just grow them off for flowering shoots, couldn't you? But yes, look at all these seedlings. So good. I have some other stuff that's out. I'm being watered at the moment. Sweet pea jungle. Right, no more, no more talking. No more talking. Let's do it. It's waiting for me over there. So on top of the layers I put down yesterday, I added some bokashi. So that is the fermented stage of two bokashi bins mixed with soil. And I think I made those in January. So. They were not as decomposed as I wanted them to be, but I think they should be fine, right? So I spread that quite thinly. Yeah, so on top of the bokashi, sorry, I put in the Blooming Amazing stuff, which is like a digestate. It's from the biogas industry, like the, the leftover stuff from the bioreactor. So they basically uh, imitate like a cow stomach I guess and then they harvest the methane gas from the I guess it's um, some type of fermentation going on in the cow stomach as well producing that methane so that methane is then used as biogas and this digestate is what's been used to bring out the gas and it's perfect for mulching and it is uh, um, uh, it, it is to be used like manure so Obviously, this is something I was sent as part of a paid promotion earlier in the year, and these are the last few bags. However, I'm seriously considering buying another pallet. They started selling in pallets now, and it's so cheap compared to other, like, natural grower, which is a similar product, which has, like, you know, a bag costs, like, 20 quid. Is that right? And this stuff costs, like like seven pounds for 70 liters. You know, this is a really good price. And as a pallet, I think it's even cheaper. So I'm thinking of buying that again, actually, um, because, um, yeah, we need quite a lot for the garden. Anyway, that's a long story. So the bulk, I'd say, in the beds in the greenhouse is the Bloomin' Amazing stuff. And then on top of that, I put in my homemade compost. So I think that compost is probably the one I started this time last year yeah it will be so it's quite um, quite a good age on it. it I've inherited a bit of a stick problem in it as in my partner and my neighbors and people who've added to it thought that brown meant sticks like big sticks and I guess that's my fault for not correcting them uh, it does not mean sticks it means like like chipped sticks would be good but not just sticks right they're too big so um, I had to sort of I don't really have a big sieve so I just spread it and then looked it over with my hands and then got rid of any obvious bind weed roots that come up through it it wasn't actually that much it's funny that so it's obviously sitting on ground that should be riddled with it and I god knows I, I put in all my bind weed in there in the compost and I think I found maybe five roots you know they're so obviously white so you can sort of tell that they're buying weed so I'm pretty happy with that and um, the sticks I just threw out and there were some bits of plastic as well and I when I was digging it out the compost I actually found these woolen socks so my partner <laughs> my partner washed my thick woolen socks that I got uh, during a Christmas trip to Sweden. I washed them in a regular wash and uh, they shrunk. So I was like, ah, let's just put on, on the compost. They're, you know, they're natural material. <laughs> and I think they've been in there the whole time I've had the allotment. So they're slowly, slowly breaking down. But it's quite funny that every time I turn the compost or uh, use the compost, I find them. 
and they've, they're actually now starting to break down properly. So it's quite interesting. So obviously they were felted, so they were really, really thick. And um, I guess that will affect it as well. If you put in like nice, thin cashmere, it'll probably break down much faster. Funny story actually, uh, just today we were put on, put on a wool wash in the machine and uh, my toddler decided to turn the machine off and I was on the phone at the time so I quickly turned it on only it's a digital one and they reset to a 60 degree wash so yeah we ruined all the woolens in that wash <laughs> but yeah it's so funny isn't it they just turn into little miniature versions of themselves <laughs> so cute but even I don't think even my toddler would be able to wear them anyway so yes that's my homemade compost so when you use homemade compost, um, unless you are, unless you have like a industrial composter, you're gonna get weed seeds in there that will have just waited and abided their time. And when you spread them, spread that compost, they're likely to start germinating. So it's quite good to keep an eye on it and keep raking it regularly. So that will stop them germinating. So if you try to do that every two weeks, every every week if you can for a bit in spring after you spread it it will save you a lot of time from weeding the big the big weeds once they come up the final layer is the the moorland gold stuff the the black stuff really quite fine so i i wanted to put that on top so the woody bits in your homemade compost isn't a problem at all it's actually a good thing because it um it, it creates more habitats for the microflora and it uh, increases drainage and in, it uh, encourages some fungal activity and all these things it just encourages a rich microflora in there which is what you want for the plants which means that they can get all the little minerals all the little nutrients that they require through the roots because there's such a rich flora there so they won't lack for anything all you need to add is water and not even feed your tomatoes really if it's a good enough bed but yeah so you might have seen then that I was using a plank to firm in the layers so you do that just to well I did that to make sure that it was sort of level because it's, it's a bit tricky when you're in there and uh, I think it did a pretty good job like the first layers were so bitty it wasn't worth doing but after I added the blooming amazing it was a, a, a good idea to do my god that was an exercise I must say it's like doing squats uh, and step ups you know anyway I'm exhausted uh, but yeah so that's then done and then I added another layer of cardboard in the aisle m mainly because I don't have that much wood chip and then I put the wood chip down and I'm having real issues finding wood chip from um, a tree surgeon so I've signed up to the chip drop which is like a website where you can just put in an address and your phone number and then they just whenever someone's in the area who signed up to this thing they just come and dump your drop your wood chip you can get logs as well um, but I'm just not having any luck. I need to maybe call around local tree surgeons and see what I can get. Uh, the problem is that you're going to get loads, isn't it? Absolutely loads. So, but I refuse to pay another bloody nine pounds for a bag of wood chip from the garden center, and that's home based. Like that's the cheap stuff. It's so expensive. But I could have done with another bag, really. But hey ho, there we are. So maybe if I get <laughs> ever get a delivery, I can add that. And then I removed um, the the wood piece of wood that I used to to um, shape the beds, and then I just firmed around and made a little sloping side there. So they will still uh, compact down over time, and I'm not going to plant into these beds for a while yet until May. So they will sink a bit settle in and uh, the activity will start underneath there with worms and whatnot so yeah um, it's gonna be good I think it's gonna be great and it's been raining on and off and been so windy sometimes like really windy but yeah I'm glad I did the beds before I put the glass in I'll say that because it was it was quite annoying it would have been quite annoying if the glass was in there so yeah but I'm glad now that's done I need to still backfill around the 
around the outside of the greenhouse but I think that's best done after I put the glass in so that it will so the glass definitely is the next job but I will need some help with that and tomorrow is Monday so we'll see we'll see what, what we can do and uh, I have promised I will make a video on uh, buying a second hand greenhouse putting it together and what to think about and all this sort of stuff so it, it'll be quite yeah hopefully I get that done but yeah wow I've been talking a lot so um <laughs> But yeah, I'm pooped. It's almost five o'clock and it's time to go inside for a cup of tea and a biscuit, probably. Oh no, I got some cake because it's Mother's Day, so I'm gonna eat some cake. Maybe have a cup of tea, yes. A nice, nice cup of tea. Oh my God, yeah, that'd be amazing. And it's so miserable outside. <sighs> but yeah, it's gonna be a bit of weather, better weather tomorrow. And um, maybe around lunchtime I can get back out on the plot and hopefully get some more stuff done. I mean, I have so much to do. I mean, I know everyone has so much to do, but I would have been so much further along if I hadn't had this second greenhouse to put up. I mean, I haven't even sowed my celery and celeriac. Uh, two types of peas I've still got to sow. I've got to sow out all my tomatoes, which I'm gonna sow early. And I mean, it's coming up now in mid-March. It's sort of time to start, isn't it? And I need to see over, look over my my grow light situation because I think I need more uh, to fit all the tomatoes <laughs> which means I'm gonna have to move all a lot more books out of the way <laughs> for my little growing station bookshelf yeah there's a, there's a lot to do but eh, I'm, st I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it <laughs> anyway uh, yeah I'll probably see you tomorrow hi again it's actually Thursday today and uh, um, I haven't managed to get much done on the plot at all this week because of work so you didn't see me on Monday uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah this will be the end of the vlog now because I was talking a lot at the weekend wasn't I <laughs> so I hope, that, I hope that was still enjoyable and if you've been watching this far thank you very much if you're new here you should consider subscribing because it all really helps so I hope to see you again next Friday for this week's vlog, which I guess starts tomorrow. <laughs> Have a great weekend um, and I'll see you next week.